Throughout history, mankind has built machines to do work and accomplish specific tasks. In medieval times, many of these machines were designed for warfare. The catapult is one such machine that used the physics principles of tension and projectile motion, as well as Newton's third law of motion. In today's activity, you'll be constructing a catapult using supplies from the Pitsco Catapult Kit. At this time, locate the following items. Once you have your supplies, you're ready to begin. From the basswood sheet, punch out two part one pieces. Two part two pieces. And two part eleven pieces. Torsion is the strain in a material that is twisted. When the material is released, it resists the strain by unwinding itself. Now that you have punched out the initial pieces, you're ready to begin constructing the catapult. Hold a part one so the long side with a notch on each end is facing down. One of the woodworking joints we'll be working with is called a mortise and tenon. Notice on the top of the part one piece is a slot or pocket that has been cut. This is the mortise. On the part two piece, there is a matching section known as the tenon that fits directly into this mortise. Apply glue along the edges of the part two tenon, making sure the hook on top of the part two faces the longer half of part one. Once the glue has set, Repeat the process for the other part one and part two pieces. Two other medieval machines that are commonly associated with the catapult are the ballista and the trebuchet. You should now have two part one and two assemblies glued. Place them on their sides so that they are parallel and the hooks on top of part two are facing out and up. At this time, take one of the part 11 pieces and apply glue to the entire side of one of its faces. This is called face gluing. Next, place this onto the assembly so that part 11 covers the joint of part one and two. As you position the 11 piece, Make sure the curve on its edge aligns with the hole in part one. Take care not to cover any part of the hole or you will be unable to insert the axle in a later step. Once you have finished, wipe off any excess glue and allow the parts to dry for 15 minutes. We're ready to move on. At this time, punch out parts three and four. Next, apply glue to the notched edge of part four and insert the part four tenon into the mortise of part three. Items launched from a catapult are considered projectiles. Galileo was the first scientist who accurately demonstrated the path that projectiles take while in motion. 
You've just glued parts three and four together. The next step is to glue the tenon on one end of part three and four assembly and insert it into the mortise at the wider end of part one. You're ready for the next step in this activity. Punch out the two part five pieces. Hold them together and make sure they line up so all three holes are aligned. You may need to turn one of the parts around to get them to line up. Next, apply glue to the tenons of the same side of both part five pieces. Make sure the notch on each part is facing up and the numeral five is facing the back of the catapult. Insert the glued tenons into the mortises on the end of part one. Galileo identified the two separate forces influencing the path of a projectile as gravity and inertia. We're moving forward in the activity. The next step is to apply glue to the tenons on the other side of the part fives and the part three and four assembly. Once the glue is in place, insert the tenons into the mortises of the other part one piece. During his study of projectile motion, Galileo discovered that the path of any projectile will follow a predictable mathematical curve. The shape of this curve is called a parabola. We're back and it's time to move on. Punch out the two part six pieces from the basswood sheet. Next, face glue them together. You'll want to ensure that the lines on the outside edges align. Once you've finished applying the glue, let it dry. The ammunition or payload in a catapult will be projected toward a target when the catapult arm is released. According to Newton's law of inertia, the projectile will travel in the same direction and at the same velocity until another force acts upon it. Now that your part six pieces are glued together, we are ready for the next step. Apply glue to the inside of both notches at the top of the part two pieces. Insert the glued part six pieces into these notches so the side with curved corners is facing out. Welcome back. At this time, punch out the two part eight pieces and face glue them together so all their edges line up. This will be the catapult's arm. When you have finished gluing, let the parts dry. Once a projectile is released from the catapult, gravity is the main external force exerted on it, which causes the projectile to change direction and hit the ground at an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that the part eight pieces are dry, you're ready to move ahead with the activity. At this time, push a 3 4 inch dowel through the hole at the far end, centering the arm in the middle of the dowel. Use a pencil to mark on both sides of the arm. Move the arm over and apply glue to the spot between the pencil marks. Next, slide the arm back to the center of the dowel, turning it to spread the glue evenly.
time to move forward with the activity. Punch out two part seven pieces from the basswood sheet. These will be placed at an angle between the part sixes and part three. The end with an uneven notch will rest on top of part four and inside part three. Apply glue inside the notched ends of the part seven pieces and a little on the face ends that will be against the inside of the catapult, which are parts one and two. Place the part seven pieces in position. In the Middle Ages, catapults typically used one of four types of energy to operate, traction, torsion, gravity, and tension. It's time to move on. Punch out the four part nine pieces. Face glue two of them to one side of the curved end of the catapult arm. Make sure the center of the part nine curves are aligned with the center of the arm's curve. You will need to hold the pieces together for a minute until they are dry enough to stay in place. When they are stable, glue the other two part nine pieces onto the other side of the arm and let it dry. Alexander the Great used a projectile-based device called a ballista to overthrow the island city of Tyre in 332 BC. At this time, all of your part nine pieces should be dry. Punch out part 10 from the basswood sheet. Holding the catapult so that the part five end faces you, position part 10 over the part five pieces with a straight end of part 10 pointing to the right. Push the round end of the part 10 down between the part five pieces, lining up the part 10 hole with the center holes of the part five pieces. Next, push a 3 4 inch dowel through all three holes, leaving approximately 3 8 inch of the dowel extending out of part five facing you. Apply glue where the dowel extends and be careful not to get any on part 10, which will be the trigger for the catapult. Catapult projectiles possess a vertical as well as a horizontal motion. When studying the physics of projectiles, these two motions are considered to be independent of each other. We're back and ready to attach the catapult arm. Insert the three inch dowel through the hole in one side of the catapult near the center of part one. With the concave side of the catapult's arm curve facing the part sixes, Thread the dowel through the remaining hole in the arm and then out the other side of the catapult. Make sure there is an even amount of dowel extending from either side of the catapult and that the arm is centered on the dowel. Take a pencil and mark both sides of the arm to identify its place. Slide the arm over just enough so you can apply glue between the pencil marks. Reposition the arm between the marks and rotate the dowel to spread the glue evenly. When you have finished, allow the glue to dry for 15 minutes. An early version of the catapult was called a gastrophete and was invented in Syracuse, Greece, about 400 BC. We're almost finished constructing the catapult. Punch out the two part 12 pieces. Slide one on each end of the three inch dowel. Apply a small amount of glue on the outside of the part 12s, but be careful not to get any between the part 12s and the catapult. Allow the glue to dry completely.
once the glue is dry, you're ready to attach the rubber band. Drop the rubber band over the catapult arm and pull the long end in front of the scoop and down between the long dowel and part four. Make sure you catch the ends of the short dowel on the end of the catapult arm and pull the other end of the rubber band back under the catapult and over the dowel, extending out from the trigger end of the catapult. Make sure the rubber band is lying flat and smooth. Congratulations! You've finished building the catapult. Before we demonstrate how to use it, I need to mention a few things about safety. First of all, the operator and anyone in range should wear safety glasses. Secondly, the only approved projectiles for this device are those made from the modeling clay included with the kit. Finally, make sure the area is clear when the projectiles are launched so no one gets injured. Now we're ready to demonstrate. Pull the arm back until it touches the frame. Raise the trigger until the notch locks the arm in place. Clear the target area and place a ball of clay in the holder. Press down on the trigger and watch your projectile fly. This concludes our demonstration of the Pitsco Catapult. If you would like to investigate other activity kits, visit our website at www.pitsco.com.